Welcome to Marriage and Life Stories with Kasimi. It's a pleasure to, to be back on your screens. Thank you so much for the support that you've given over the, the seasons. And uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I am really so grateful. I appreciate you so much. Uh, kindly look at your, if you're returning guests, kindly look at your subscribe button. And uh, if it is not subscribed, kindly subscribe. You subscribe only once. If you're new and it is your first time coming here, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Uh, I am so happy that you've chosen this channel as your source of information. And I look forward to growing with you. And uh, I will ask you kindly subscribe to this channel and let us enjoy uh, our lives together as we grow. Okay, uh, today we are looking at a topic uh, that affects most women and men at the same time. And so it is going to be uh, a man and woman uh, discussion that we are going to, to talk about today. And uh, the topic is how, of course, I already, I know, you already know, how to deal with mean in-laws. There are in-laws who are really good. And you know, you're married into this home and everyone knows their position and they are really so supportive and they are encouraging you. If you are a daughter-in-law, they really want you to make their son happy. And if you're a son-in-law, they really want to give you space to manage your home and uh, things can be going well. But on the other side, there can be a disaster. You, know, you find your sister-in-law wants your space as a woman. You know, your mother-in-law doesn't want to give a, a, to give the son a space for him to, to get married and get used to his wife. You know, and sometimes you find that, you know, they come to the house, they, their husband brings the sisters. Uh, if he's the one who has the money, the, the brothers are in that house. And by the end of the day, there is no marriage, there is no relationship, there is no love, there is nothing except strife, strife and strife and more strife. At other times, it is the lady. She probably earns some little money and, uh, and then she, she decides to bring her entire family into the home. How do we deal with such situations? Because when that happens and there is no privacy, in most cases, the relationship will never take off and eventually it leads to separation and divorce as time goes by. Now, we must appreciate that there are times when you get married to this person and you find has been living with the brothers and the sisters and maybe there is no other home that these people can go to they are just he is or he or she is the sole parent they are looking at and they were living uh, with this person is there anything that we can do to make this life better and make uh, the, the family that we found with our spouses to be better well it is possible but let us first look, because there are not all those people who live in the house can be bad. So we really need to find a balance in the event that these people are living there. And this is the only brother, this is the only sister. They have no parents, so they have no any other home to go to. And you can't even afford to put them in hostel, in boarding schools if they are studying. So if they are mean, what can we do? Gentlemen, what do you do if you, your wife and her people are really bad? Ladies, what do you do if their husband and his people are really so mean? Number one, keep your loyalty to your spouse. Okay? If you are a lady and uh, your mother is intervening in your marriage, you know, it doesn't want to give up. He's singing songs that you're the one who is the breadwinner in the home. Make sure that your loyalty is to your husband and let your people know. Don't allow your husband to be the one stressing and struggling with your people. Make your loyalty clear. And husband, make your loyalty to your wife clear and let the other people stay in their lanes. They cannot come and run in the lane of the wife that is why you left the home and you married and you left them in their home. So your loyalty, number one, must be to your spouse. Woman, the loyalty must be to your husband. Husband, your loyalty must be to your wife if you want this marriage really to work. Once loyalties are confused, there's not going to be a marriage. Number two, 
you must know your role and stick to it. If you are a wife, just be a wife. Don't come to be a mother to that boy. He has his own mother. Allow his mother to be a mother. Allow his sister to be a sister. Allow his brother to be a brother. Stick to your role as only the wife. Once you start wanting to be the sister, to wanting to be the brother, wanting to be the mother, you will lose this gentleman. That is a part of him that he has grown with it and it must stay. He must have the relationship with those people. And gentlemen, stick to your role as a husband. Don't monitor who your, your wife is talking to, what they are talking with a brother, what they are talking with a sister, what is talking with a father. Sometimes the girls are really daddy's girls and, and they are on call and everything. I'm not saying girls forget your, your husband and stick to your daddy. No, that's why you left the home. But husbands, stick to being a husband to that lady and allow the mother to be her mother, allow her father to continue being her father, allow the relationship between the brothers to stick by. In the event that they are mean, if you stick to your roles, eventually they will find um, that they have to keep in their lane and let the marriage be. Number three, talk about it in a very calm way. Uh, talk about your relatives. If you are a lady, and, and, and your people are really giving your husband a hard time. They're asking for money. They are calling him all the time. They are giving him instructions. They are showing up at uninvited times. And a man cannot find peace in his own home. Talk to your people about it. Talk to your relatives. Talk to your mother. Talk to your sisters. Let them know that you're now married and you need to grow. Husband, if they are, your people are the ones giving, in most cases it is the women who suffer. If your people are really giving this lady a hard time and she cannot bear it, she's struggling, talk to your people and put them in order and make sure that uh, she has peace in the home. And she's a stranger after all. She's the one who has just come to a new home. And so every attack that is facing her, every abuse that is coming her way, if you do not protect her, nobody else will protect her. Number four. Once, is it number four? Or, okay, whatever number it is. Once there is already a conflict and, uh, and these relatives are, 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 are doing every wickedness, do not criticize your husband. Don't abuse him because of his people. He is not them. It is his brother, his sister, his mother, or his father who has done something wrong. So don't attack your husband. You see, your people, don't attack. Don't attack your spouse. And gentlemen, don't attack your wife. Sometimes you, you have these things of telling them, you see, your poor people, now they are coming. They think, oh, you, you know, and you talk about all those things. Do not attack. You chose each other. You knew the families you are getting married into. So when issues come, when the in-laws are mean, stick to supporting each other and you fight the war together so that you can maintain your relationship at the same time you keep uh, your, your spouses together. You keep your relatives in their position and you can still love them. And then the other point is create specific boundaries. Create a, a, a boundaries uh, that you can stick to. Do not just be in a hurry to bring relatives to stay with you. If you are married, you need time to get to know each other. And so the boundaries are they come and visit and they go back. If you are putting them in school, you can choose to put them in boarding schools. You can choose to bring them to hostels if they're in university. But create those boundaries. Another point you need to consider is, okay, another point you need to consider is that even as you create those boundaries, remember these people were being taken care of before you came into this home. And so why all of a sudden do you want them to come in the house when they actually had their homes? And do not invite them to come and babysit for you, to come and work for you, to come and do anything. If you need a maid, get one. Don't bring your in-law because when the fights start, you are not going to put out the fire. And the last one, which is the most important, avoid sharing marital challenges with your parents. If you are a man and you have a disagreement with your wife, 
and then all of a sudden you're running to, to your mother to talk about her, of course they will fight her. And if you're a wife and you have disagreement with your husband and you're running to your parents to talk about it, they will definitely hate him and fight him. And those bring tensions and they will break the home. So keep the in-laws in their space, stick to each other, know your roles and build a beautiful home. The home is built by the husband and the wife and nobody else is going to help you. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. And please, I will remind you again, kindly subscribe, like, and let's grow together. God bless you.